Good. Äh, ja, hier ist Libertär das ganze Ding wieder auf dem Bermuda-Funk. Und heute machen wir mal was ganz Spezielles. Und zwar habt ihr leider nur das Audio, weil wir ja auf dem Radio sind und nicht das Video. Ich mache ein kleines freies Gespräch, also kein großes Interview mit dem David Roricks. Es ist äh, ein Songwriter und äh, politischer Aktivist aus den USA, der hier auch schon in Deutschland war, ähm, momentan nicht auftreten kann und äh, sich seine Zeit damit vertreibt, äh, verschiedene politische Podcasts zu machen. Und äh, jetzt äh, spricht er mit mir. Und wenn ihr kein Englisch könnt, dann habt ihr leider Pech gehabt. So, David, um, I just told um, my um, listeners um, who you are and um, if they don't know any English, um, it's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's excellent. So I, I, I would not translate it for, uh, for the Germans, but I think um, the most people will understand it. <laughs> oh, that's great. So, David, I'm very glad that uh, we have the opportunity to talk each other um, over such a long distance. And first, I think, uh, just um, say something about your person, what you do normally and what you do in that um, critical time now. Yeah, normally I'm a touring singer-songwriter and uh, mainly travel around uh, Northern Europe and do concert tours and write uh, songs and record them. And I do, I've been doing podcasting for some years now. And since the pandemic hit, I've become a full-time broadcaster, basically doing a hosting an online open mic and a interview show four days of the week and still writing songs, but not touring anymore because uh, obvious reasons. <laughs> you know? Wow. And um, you're, um, do you call yourself an, an, an anarchist? Would you say that? Yeah. Yeah, I would. I, I just, uh, I, I do call myself an anarchist and I also uh, rarely um, introduce myself as an anarchist because I'd, I'd rather, uh, you know, people understand my political perspective from more detailed you know presentation than than just the word which most people don't understand what it means anyway so you know it's uh i i had the same problems for a, a lot of years um because um a lot of people uh um don't know what anarchism is most people think anarchism is um my my, my teacher told me anarchism is if you go um over the street when the traffic light is red <laughs> yeah right <laughs> that, that is anarchism and, and um people uh, think anarchism is a totally chaos but i think uh, it's the opposite yeah absolutely i mean i th actually i think crossing uh, when the light is red especially in the german context is is a very dangerous thing to do you're endangering people around you and i learned uh, very early because i you know i grew up in the new york area and everybody jaywalks everybody cross nobody pays attention to the lights and just like in england and it's um, it's very dangerous and people die because of that and uh, i don't know why people you know, have such disregard for their own lives in, in places like England and New York. But here on the West Coast, people don't jaywalk. And in Germany, people don't jaywalk. And it's these, I don't know, these weird little things that have cultural differences. I don't know exactly how they all come about. I think it's, you know, to some degree, you can make sense of it. But it's, you know, some parts of the world, people, people cross the road and risk their lives and other places they don't. And in Germany, of course, they don't. And so if you if you uh, if you do uh, cross the road like a New Yorker, you're not you're really causing you're endangering people around you because they will cross the road. They will follow you across the road, assuming the light has changed because you're crossing the road and they will not see that the light is still red. And I have nearly gotten Germans and Danes uh, injured and or killed by my jaywalking when I first was there and I stopped. And I stopped, you know, because I care about other people. And and that's and if you care about other people, whatever your political philosophy is, you don't jaywalk in Germany. But, uh, you know, that's uh, but if you don't care about other people, you do jaywalk. And and so uh, the, this uh, is a really uh, 
a very, I think, wrong idea to have about anarchists. So a very, very common uh, kind of misconception that that uh, anarch to be an anarchist means to be an individualist who doesn't care about other people. No, that's uh, that's not anarchism, and I don't think it's you know, except except in the minds of you know teachers who don't like anarchism, you know. <laughs> Um, I think um, the problem is that um, anarchism is, is not an ideologic uh, thing like uh, communism, where you think, okay, um, that's how society should be. So for me, um, um, anarchism is, is a method. It's um, um, how you organize a society. And yeah. um, I yeah. think um, if you're an anarchist, you say you don't know how the best society is, but um, how we can come to that and how we organize it. So I um, bought a T-shirt uh, from, from an American writer. Um, I haven't fo I forgot the name, but I think you know it. And it's um, um, anarchism is taking a democracy serious. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And sure. I, I think it's, it's really uh, the, the thing that's uh, the core of anarchism. And... Um, I think a lot of people are um, think um, about um, are are anarchists, but they don't know it because um, they think yeah. anarchism is chaos. And so I think, yeah, um, for me, in former times, I always say, oh, um, I don't want to talk about my politic um, political um, thing. But now I think I'm an anarchist and. I think times changes and um, anarchism is not so um, um, uh, roof, um, oh, oh, um, taboo or is it? It's, it's, it's not. It's not yeah. so uh, uh, taboo like like in former times. Do you have the same? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's much more something that can, people are talking about and 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 taking seriously as uh, as a concept. And I would say the same is certainly true of socialism as well, which which here in the United States especially has been uh, basically taboo since the 1950s at least. And it's uh, it's really um, uh, pe people are now talking about socialism and and to some extent anarchism in 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 serious circles and you know in in uh in to some extent in the corporate media you know not not completely dismissing these ideas and also there's a lot more talk about how undemocratic uh, this uh, supposed uh, democracy is and and how uh, what what would real democracy uh, look like you know it's it's actually to some extent being talked about now in, in uh, wide you know, on a more widespread basis in the US like the fact that democracy here began as uh, something uh, a privilege only for uh, rich white men uh, who were citizens and uh, you know a very very limited uh, percentage of the population and it's still uh, you know if it's still a democracy really for the rich you know it's just it's changed its forms a bit and it appears to be uh, open to more uh, participation, but it's very much a rule of the rich situation. And uh, yeah, of course, um, we're, we're such a long way from, from any kind of uh, social democracy, uh, let alone uh, any kind of uh, real, uh, real full democracy that we might call anarchism. Uh, but um, uh Yeah, at this point in in this country, social democracy would be a massive step forward. <laughs> yes, I, I also think um, we have to go um, little steps. And I think um, the problem here also in Germany is most people say, um, I don't want to be involved in politics. They always um, say, oh, the, politic, uh, the, the politicians are all bad. And I'd say, um, okay, uh, if the politicians are all bad, then do it better and um, do something. And they just um, say, ah, uh, Mrs. Merkel is bad, or, or I don't know. And um, I think if you're not do something better, you don't have the right to um, to be against these politicians because the, you, you can um, exchange them. But what what I think it's... Um, little things if you don't buy uh, plastic bags or if you don't buy big cars or, or any but um, these little steps most people don't go 
but 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 they can do something and i think uh, per perhaps it's a chance um in these academic um times that people more think about um these little step do you think I mean, I would say that uh, people, people, nothing, nothing wrong with taking those little steps, and it's also important to do and uh, to set an example for how you can live uh, better. Uh, but um, I think that that what's really important is that uh, people realize that, in addition to participating in the democratic process to whatever extent it exists in your country, and I'd say uh, in Germany. I would be much more excited about participating in the democratic process uh, than here, uh, because the democracy we have is ex extremely primitive. We, you know, this, this two-party state that basically has no capacity to be anything more than a two-party state, uh, and both parties are the same basically in terms of like they're they're all run by it's basically mostly rich people in the Congress, and uh, the Democrats are actually even richer than the Republicans on average, just by a little bit. Okay. But um, at four thousand uh, dollars net worth richer than the Republicans on average, you know, just I mean, it's 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 just worth noting because most people would assume it would be the other way. It's not. Mm -hmm. But um, but I think what's really uh, important is that people realize that here and around the world, really, uh, what really changes uh, governments uh, other than uh, elections is uh, direct action. And I think. Uh, you have loads of great examples of direct action uh, having a tr tremendous impact on government policy in uh, German his recent German history uh, with the anti-nuclear movement and the squatting movement to take two very important examples that are often, especially with the squatting movement, it's often derided in mainstream circles as just a bunch of privileged punks or whatever. Uh, but I think uh, the squatting movement uh, had a tremendous and very important impact on uh, on European society generally. Uh, that would be hard to overstate, and it was, and it had nothing to do with participating in democracy and uh, you know in in the in politics. You know. Yeah, um, I'm original. I I am um, was born in Hamburg. And um, <laughs> <laughs> the baby woke up, <laughs> but I'm still here. <laughs> well, if, if, um, if there is something with the baby and you have to finish, um, it's okay. Then, and, and, no, I don't have to finish. I think her mom will come in and, okay. and take her, uh, but she might wait until she starts making more noise. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was born in Hamburg and um, now I'm living in the southern part of Germany where you also been there in Besigheim nearby. Right. And, um, I am grown up in Hamburg, and there was um, the squatting um, thing about um, the Hafenstraße. Oh yeah, Hafenstraße. And yeah. And, and and the um, Rote Flora. And um, it, this is really a strong movement, and they are um, now in that um, houses um, since the 1980s, and they really um, defend it. And I think. Uh, they have got my honor to to do that. I'm yeah. I'm not, I'm not the fighting one, but uh, <laughs> I I think that's great. I'm I'm just more filming. <laughs> yeah, no, there's so many different important roles to play in in any kind of struggle. And but uh, yeah, I mean, just holding on to the buildings like Hafenstrasse and keeping them occupied and and uh, keeping the defenses, uh, you know, building the barricades. I mean, you know, you don't have to be uh, one of the ones uh, thro throwing uh, things at the police. There's a lot of other. <laughs> <laughs> important ways to participate, not to downplay that role, which is, I think, also important in many situations. But uh, it's, I, I mean, the, the housing policies in places like Germany, who knows how bad things might have gotten at this point in terms of neoliberalism and austerity budgets. Uh, you know, I mean, I know things are going in the wrong direction with Merkel and her policies around uh, the CDU policies around deregulating the housing market and uh, allowing it for uh, more market rate housing in places like Berlin. But I mean, there's, it's a big struggle in Germany, of course. And, and uh, I know the city of Berlin has recently made some great advances in terms of uh, reversing uh, some of that uh, bad housing policy, uh, but it, like uh, by buying back hundreds of thousands of apartments, if I recall, I don't remember the numbers, but it was some massive thing that just happened in Berlin around housing. But it's, uh, it, I think, we can thank the, the 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 squatters for making 
the issue of housing still something that is really uh, struggled over and and to to a large extent you know the it's been a real victory i mean housing in many european countries including germany is still for the most part affordable mm -hmm. and um i mean it's uh not something we can take for granted but it's the situation is so much better there i think because of you know those kinds of social movements that's part part of why it's better yeah and i think um it's also in in, in hamburg and in, in st pauli and um that's yeah it's a um yeah a place uh, where where um, a lot of um clubs venues are um and and a lot of poor people live in and uh it's 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 the heart of hamburg and uh you could um a few years ago you could live there for for cheap money now all the um, advertisement uh, agencies and um, the, the um, extraction of the harbor and so and um, Hamburg, um, World City, and so on. Yeah, and, it's changed and, a lot for yeah, the worse, for sure. And, and I'm very sad because it's my hometown that yeah. uh, these 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 old St. Pauli uh, with the, with its little clubs and also because of Corona, um, these little clubs are dying. And yeah. uh, I hope uh, that uh, the government, they just support the big ones, the, um, the, the car uh, sellers, uh, uh, Mercedes, uh, BMW, um, the um, Lufthansa, and so they get the money. And I think um, the little clubs and the little, um, little yeah. shops... Uh, They're looking at going out of business, yeah. right? Yeah. And, yeah, and this is I've also heard about this happening in Belgium and the Netherlands that they're they're bailing out the big companies, but the little clubs are are at risk of going out of business. Here in the United States, I think that there is an estimate from some restaurant association person I heard on the radio that eighty five percent of restaurants in the U.S. are probably going to go out of business. Oh, oh. And and the other topic um, that many German people are also afraid of is um, how it's going on in the U.S. with the politics, uh, with this uh, fucking guy Trump. Uh, uh, a lot of people in, in Germany don't understand why people uh, voted him. They don't, and why now, because of his behavior and what he's done are still there people that are um, in favor of him. And I also um, don't understand this. I don't damn all the people in America because I know there are a lot of people like you that are posted, but I, I couldn't understand the other ones. <laughs> yeah. I mean, of course, it's, it's worth noting that Trump actually lost the election in terms of the popular vote. He lost by 3 million votes, even though the opponent was the weakest possible imperialist neoliberal the democratic party could have offered aside from joe biden you know so but yeah and but yeah i think um it's in order to understand the situation in the us today i think that you really uh it, it helps a lot to have a familiarity with early 20th century german history you know because i think that we are in 1933 here in the us and The, it's not that history is going to repeat and it's not that, you know, everything's going to turn out the same. We don't know what's going to happen next mm -hmm. year. But the question of whether there is going to be an election in November mm -hmm. is a very real question. If there is really an, an, an election. And so um, you think um, um, Trump is a little bit like um, Hitler with the Ermächtigungsgesetz. I don't know the um, English word. Uh, uh, like uh, disregarding all the basic laws of the yeah, country yeah, and, and yeah. disregarding Supreme Court judgments and appointing uh, people to head departments who never get vetted by the Congress, who are never actually appointed or, or uh, you know, there's a process for appointing uh, heads of uh, federal departments. And he's just ignoring this process and appointing what, what they call acting heads. So they are just totally political appointees that have no, that have not been approved by the Congress and have no, uh, I mean, as bad as the Congress is and as bad as both parties are, uh, he is just completely circumventing all the normal political processes 
and disregarding court judgments. I mean, these children that have been taken from their parents, these thousands and thousands of children that have been taken from their parents at the border, many of them now for years, they still have not been returned to their parents. Uh, and even though courts have ordered the government to return the children to their parents, they the first ruling telling them to do that, I can't remember, was like a year ago or something. And now uh, the uh, the courts have once again told the government uh, to return the children and given them a deadline of three weeks to do it. But I mean, I don't think anybody even knows how many children we're talking about. The records were not kept, and that's also not government policy. They're supposed to keep records. You know, they're destroying records. There's, uh, it's really, um, it, it's really. Uh, uh, and they're talking about uh, Trump is constantly talking about how how this is going to be the most corrupt election ever. And we can't trust the outcome of the election if there's going to be an election. And also the Postal Service is being is falling apart because it's totally underfunded and understaffed. And the big bailouts did not include the Postal Service. And if there's going to be an election in November, it will have to be uh, done by mail to be done safely in, during a pandemic like this, which is an out of control pandemic in much of this country right now. And if, uh, if there's not a, a functioning postal service because the government uh, destroys it by not funding it, I mean, there's a lot of ways he can uh, manage to uh, have a, some kind of supposed, you know, apparently legitimate excuse to cancel the election. I, I don't know if it's going to happen, but it's it, these, I think, are, at this point, are real questions. And it's uh, it's too early to tell, you know, what's going to happen. But I mean, with the, the protests that have been happening over the past mm -hmm. few weeks, I mean, Trump has um, it, he has done his absolute best to make them as big as possible and as violent as possible. He has, through policy and through his words, done his best to, to pour fuel on the fires. And, um, you know, it's, it's it, the it, it's he's trying to start a civil war, you know, and he's not succeeding. But uh, whether he will succeed is an open question. Because we have lots of brown shirts, you know, and you know they're not very well organized, and it's not a big uh, movement compared to in the '30s in Germany. I think on either side, whether either the left or the right, they're both on the streets. There, there's nothing to compare to the level of organization of either the left or the right in the '30s in Germany in the early '30s. But, um, but the dynamic is there. And and the problem I think um, and it's worldwide. Um, more and more uh, leaders are um, acting uh, like dictators. Like dictators, um, they are um, democratic um, elect elected, like yeah. uh, um, Trump, like like Putin, like like Orban, and and all the other ones. And, and I think very notably Modi in India and Bolsonaro in, in Brazil. I mean, to take yeah. two very yeah. big countries. Yeah. And I think uh, this is um, the, the um, yes, as you said, and in the, the, um, the 30s and the 20th century in Germany, um, uh, the democracy is... Uh, Uh, going down and and the old um, nationalism and dictatorship is coming back and I think all the people that are against that we, we have to we have to really unite and do something against it. Also in Germany, um, um, the the ones um, that um, say Mrs. Merkel is shit um, that are the, mostly the the right ones. Mrs. Merkel is not the best politician and so, but. But in, in, in comparison to the other ones, um, mm -hmm. she tries to do something. She, she tries to do for the refugees and, and so on. She, she's not so bad. But um, um, a lot of people, and that's the problem, that are um, like Trump, you couldn't talk to them um, in a rational way because um, they are dogmatic. And, um, and they get all their information yeah. from from like basically fake news sources. Yeah, and that's yeah. the problem. But but I'm I think there are a lot of people that don't want this, and but we have to unite. And and it's also the in the left in Germany, they quarrel against each other, little groups. 
and they i think it's it's more important to see what unite us than what sep, uh, separate us so, yeah so. Ad, absolutely a, a unity on the left would be a, it's a nice it's a nice fantasy and and it, and of course it needs to happen but it's also i think uh it, it's it, you know it's important to also call out the the sort of um the center left for their complete inability to rise to the occasion uh because if they don't if the social democrats or or here the democratic party you know if, if they're not able to uh rule in a way that it, where that allows the working class to eat and and have a decent life you know if they are too scared of the rich and powerful uh or too controlled by the rich and powerful to be able to uh do anything that will prevent the rise of fascism then uh, then then i think we cannot blame uh the 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 far left we can't blame the communists or anarchists uh, for the inability to prevent fascism if the social democrats themselves or the democratic party here is unable to uh to reverse the trend of increasing stratification of wealth because like what you see under this uh for example the past eight years of the obama administration during those eight years uh that we had this uh, really nice looking friendly eloquent uh brilliant orator brilliant person in the white house he was uh ruling over the uh a terrible, terrible economic situation. Of course, he inherited a terrible economic situation, and then he made it worse. His administration made it worse. The Goldman Sachs bankers that made up his uh, cabinet, uh, you know, they just uh, carried out, uh, continued the same policies uh, of, of, you know, the bailout of the rich that began under the Bush administration. Uh, and uh, continued many of the same imperial policies that be that began under the Bush administration or before the Bush administration, you know, and continued the funding of the military to the tune of seven hundred billion dollars a year. And of course, you know, we got we got health care out of the deal. Uh, many of us did. Uh, but uh, the, during those eight years throughout this country, especially in, in certain parts of the country, the cost of housing doubled. You know, so that's uh, that's and that's what people will remember. And uh, that's, you know, whether they understand what all the dynamics involved were or not, what people understand clearly from their own personal experiences is that they got poorer and life got harder under a uh, democratic rule. And the same thing happened last time there was a Democrat in power, although they say the economy was booming in the 90s. It was only booming for people that had lots of stocks, you know, for the working class, things were just getting worse under those eight years of Bill Clinton. So, you know, and, and not that things improved under Republicans, they got worse under Republicans too. But what the what the reg, what the working class here has been experiencing for the past 50 years or so has been just a constant decline in uh in in real wages and uh, a constant decline in the in the in the quality of life and now an actual decline in longevity. We are now we are now living less long than we used to. It, so, so maybe not as dramatic as Russia in the '90s, but it is uh, it is a very dramatic um, falling apart of society. And when society falls apart, you know, people look for more radical solutions, and the radical solutions that are available uh, do not include uh, the left. I mean, we you know we the left and 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 the anarchist movement and you know this kind of. Uh, element has been so locked out of any kind of uh i mean we just you know the way the police uh, behave i mean how the police beat the shit out of occupy wall street all over the country you know it was amazing that it lasted as long as it did with that much police brutality going on and you look at the police brutality happening all over the country now i mean you know they the the system makes sure that the options are very limited and you know the options in terms of what appear to be radical solutions that were available at least conceivably were were be being led by bernie sanders and donald trump and the democratic party did everything possible to sabotage bernie sanders mm -hmm. both in 2016 and in 2020 so they have handed us donald trump 
Yes, I, I think uh, Bernie Sanders would be a um, opportunity, or, um, especially for for, for for the young people that support him. Um, I th I think them uh, making politics or or, or um, making your life as an anarchist. Um, I think it's it's very hard because I'm an anarchist, but I'm um, I know uh, we don't have. Um, that system so uh, we have to um, we have to deal with a, with a faulty system and we have to uh, we have to act in this and we have to uh, make um, 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 contrib um, no um, we, we have make unities with people we don't like because we have to fight against fascism and uh, and on the other side, we have to um, stay to our uh, very own opinion, and I think uh, um, the only way is to um, to really change the system, because um, if we don't change the system, nothing will change. But um, that that's too much for a lot of people. But I think um, uh, for me, it's not a democracy because you 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 can choose between. Um, uh, in your case, between Democrats and and Republicans, and they say, "Oh, oh, we have a democracy," but you don't, um, you couldn't uh, say what they do, and if they do something wrong, you couldn't say, um, "Now uh, we get you out of the office." So I I think um, we have to um, control more in these um, so-called democracy, and, and on the other side. Um, all the anarchists have to um, unite and and make um, the other culture, so uh, uh, DIY venues or, or, or repair shops or so thing, so so that we are a little bit independent from um, from these um, um, democratic structures. Yeah, I totally agree with all that. I mean, we need to do as much uh, as much as possible. We need to be creating alternatives, uh, alternative models for living and for uh, surviving and for education and for all sorts of in all sorts of different ways, alternative presses, alternative everything. You know, we need uh, lots of alternative structures that are not part of uh, the capitalist uh uh, system, uh, but at the same time, I think uh, it, also, and I think I agree that, like, at the same time as people are involved with such projects, people can also go to the, you know, to vote once a year or whatever, you know, twice a year, whatever it is, you know, it's not going to kill you. Um, but, uh, but most importantly, uh, I think we need to realize that reforms happen not because of which party gets elected most of the time but because of uh, events that are taking place in on the streets in the real world and um the the fact that you're hearing uh, both uh, leaders of both parties uh, at local and state and federal level all over this country talking every day about racism institutional racism police brutality uh, the the budget for the police uh, whether we have enough social services in a, a city you know and talking about these things um this is uh t entirely the result of uh widespread uh, protests uh, uh, that have taken the streets, you know, and, and it is the fact that the protests have been widespread and going on for a month and have taken streets and bridges every day. Uh, that has been uh, what's been so effective about the protests. And it's also what has brought down so much police brutality is just, uh, you know, what they call peacefully or what you would any sensible person would call peacefully taking the streets. Marching down the street here in this country is considered to be a an action that warrants a violent police repression. And, uh, and and that also, I think, in case people don't understand what's going on here, the police are attacking people for marching down the streets. Uh, the police are attacking people for doing what in at least uh, from my experience, generally in places like Denmark, uh, will result in a police escort uh, to keep traffic in order and prevent accidents. Uh, what happens here is uh, the police... Uh, as soon as people are in the street, start attacking them with uh, tear gas, uh, s rubber coated steel bullets, uh, batons, uh, tasers, and sound weapons. You know, and then it, these these uh, un 
provoked attacks by the police are causing a lot of people who had no plan to uh, necessarily uh, smash windows or or burn uh, stores, uh, you know, this uh, people get angry, you know, and and I've seen the same thing happen in many different countries, including in Germany, incidentally, where when the police attack uh, people who had no plan to have a riot. Uh, the people will riot. And I, like in Rostock in 2007, it was quite remarkable at the G8 protests. The people who actually started smashing the cobblestones in the streets of Rostock and throwing them at the police were not the black bloc. And, and I, I don't know how many people were, like, were there or no. It was, it was kids that had no intention of fighting with the police. And they were attacked by the police. And uh, and I don't know exactly who started it or why the police started attacking everybody, but it was collective punishment on the part of the police, um, you know. And it 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 was uh, maybe somebody threw something at them. I don't know. I didn't see that. But what I did see was massive numbers of police just descending on the crowd of marchers. And what was interesting about it at the time was seeing that. They, people were fighting back because they were being attacked. And, and it was actually the black bloc uh, at the time, the, you know, the autonomous uh, bloc had no plans to fight with the police. They had already agreed that this was going to be a day where they don't do that. You know, this was like the family friendly march. But, you know, you, you don't you can't have a family friendly march when, when the, you don't know what the police are going to do. You know, and if that's true, much more true here than it is in Germany, but it's true in any anywhere where there's a big event taking place. You know, it, it tends to be, uh, you know, at least in the countries that I'm familiar with, the police are just going to attack people for taking the streets. If, uh, you know, if if uh, in, in many different situations, I think it's very um, difficult, um, especially in, in in the U.S., where um, we don't understand. How, that the police act like that uh, if there is nothing really nothing and uh, they kill people uh, um, i've been on lo lots of demonstration here in germany and um, i experienced both things i experienced um, police um, we have got an um, anti-fascist um, demonstration at the first uh, of may it was mm. uh, in 2011 and um, they um We don't do anything and they um, um, uh, put us in, in a place for, for about eight hours where uh, it was really heat, a really, really um, a hot day. Mm. And, um, and they, they uh, arrested people and, and w with no, um, just, just for fun. And on the other way, I w was on the um, big um, anarchist demo in Frankfurt against the... Um, um, The bank, the, the big the uh, bank. central bank, yeah, yeah. block occupy. And, and I think um, some people, and um, I think uh, violent violence is okay if you're attacked. And um, but some some kids I don't understand. And there there was a demonstration, and there were, were kids and were mothers with with their children, and they uh, threw stones into the windows, and there was no police, and they know it. Because um, the police uh, know that uh, somebody will do that, and so we don't yeah. reach our aim. And some some think of violence uh, from protesters, but but these are not not people that think um, political. They just want to have their fun. And that, yeah, and this is know. happening. Is, is, yeah, and I don't know exactly what motivates some people to do some things, but the what's in, what the, what's the important uh, point is is the way the police engage in collective punishment after this kind of thing happens, and the way they facilitate this by not being there, as you described. The, the police were not there; they had left yeah. the scene. They yeah. were inviting this. They knew that there would be some people uh, engaging in such activity. And here, all over the country, you find that when people start torching buildings and breaking windows the police are absent mm. and then uh they then later on they come at when when there's fewer people out and they start attacking and you know mopping up or whatever but um they just allow this kind of thing to happen and it's not that so many people are necessarily 
engaging in window breaking and burning that the police would have much trouble controlling uh, the situation. Mm. But they love it when people start smashing things, you know, and I'm not saying it's wrong uh, to smash police stations and take them over. I, I love the fact that the police station in Minneapolis was burned to the ground and that people moved into it. And I love uh, the fact that the police retreated in Seattle and that people took over the police station in Seattle. That's wonderful. Uh, but uh, it's uh, but the, the authorities, the police, the, the politicians love it when windows are smashed because the, it, they can make themselves look good and look like defenders of law and order. And and they can make the potential for a far right takeover uh, more popular um, among some elements of the population who are scared of black people and scared of protests and scared of anarchists and watch Fox News and believe everything they're told, or maybe they've even uh, had bad experiences when they went into the city at some point. And when they're younger, maybe they got mugged at gunpoint, you know, and whatever happened to them. And then they walk, watch Fox News. And it's a whole combination of things that creates uh, this kind of mindset. And there is real violence in society. And there is a real problem with, uh, with all sorts of uh, violence and, and, and crime and, and, you know, but uh, as any sensible person knows, the solution uh, to crimes, which are largely, when you look at it, crimes of poverty, the solution is to end poverty. You know, but uh, of course, uh, that's not uh, here in the U.S. Uh, that's that's never been a, a consensus around that idea. You know, and uh, you know, around this sort of basic idea that most people in most social democratic type countries just take for granted that of course if you're going to have poverty you're going to have crime and and if you don't want to have crime you need to end poverty everybody understands that as sort of an obvious statement in in places like norway or denmark uh, but um, here it's a very controversial concept and they're of course the far right and well not just the far right but many people in society believe that uh, the solution to crime is punishment hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, we've we've talked a lot of, about politics, and I think it's very important. And uh, I like your opinions, and I think uh, we have to go on, and we have to do what we could do um, as a person and uh, with with our friends. Um, and I uh, enjoy talking to you, and I hope uh, we will continue this for a while. And at the end, I just want to uh, talk about uh, your your music with mm -hmm. you. Because yeah. um, I'm interested in that also because um, I'm uh, also doing music and uh, I just saw um, your uh, broadcast about uh, songwriting and uh, I, I, I saw myself a little bit in that. So, um, ex and that's, I think that what's very important for people to, to experience things, to, to have time to do that. Because a lot of kids, because in the school they don't have the time, and um, I also um, uh, I put my guitar and and have some chords or I have uh, something I'm um, angry about, and then the, um, it comes to your mind and you wrote write a text. And it, in in my um, case, it's so mostly that there's first the text and then I create some chords or how. how I just want to say, um, asked how, what, what is the music for you? Is it um, just a living or is this um, mainly um, to express uh, yourself and your opinion? Well, it's definitely um, started out as a, as a passion and still is uh, for just, uh, I love music and, and I love writing. And, and uh, I think uh, it's a great way to communicate. Songs are a great way to communicate and very powerful medium of communication. And music is really uh, good for my emotional and mental health and other people's emotional and mental health. Good for community building, uh, good for um A lot of things, um, you know, I guess when you're a teenager and you start playing the guitar, you, you think, you know, one one reason might be that you, you hope it might attract uh, a companionship. <laughs> it's good for that, too. <laughs> you know, it's good for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I mean, but music is just uh, is, is part of our our blood. You know, it's part of our it's I mean, we 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 have rhythm uh, from the time our hearts start beating and we can we can sing as soon as we can make noises uh, with our vocal cords, you know. 
it's um it's just intrinsic to to who we are and has been for i i, I think we can say for sure has been for tens of thousands of years if not longer you know uh it's uh, there's there's good evidence that we've been playing music at least for the past 60,000 years or longer mm. um but um it's uh but but certainly it's also um how i make a living so and i used to work um other jobs uh like um that i really didn't like i've never had a job that i liked other than playing music but uh certainly working other jobs uh and having to make a living and pay the rent uh, doing things i didn't like to do uh w was very inspiring to make me try to take the whole business angle seriously and as a musician you know not just play music for fun because i do have to eat and pay the rent and you know, all that stuff and now support my family and other things so um, i've been making a living at it for a long time too and uh, since the 90s and it was a lot easier to make a living as a musician in the, in the 90s i can say for sure uh, but uh, it's it's still possible to make a living as a musician, even during the pandemic, uh, but um, even without any gigs. Uh, uh, but it is uh, certainly a very different business model <laughs> from the way that it used to be uh, or the way touring uh, used to be. It, it um, I mean, in, in the because the, 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 the way before the pandemic, the music industry uh, collapsed um, you know, because of the lack of merch sales, you know, everything's free online and, and that uh, has a lot of good things about it. But in terms of making a living, it, it's made it a lot harder for a lot of people. Uh, and even just to have money to record a good album, you know, it just became, uh, it, there's no, it used to be you recorded an album and then even if you spent many thousands of dollars on it, it was like no big deal because you knew that you'd make that up in the first few hundred CDs that you sold. And then after that, you'd be paying the rent and and then you know and i used to always sell a few thousand cds every year touring around playing 100 gigs or 150 gigs or whatever but uh you know that's uh that stopped happening and then at the same time as that stopped happening the rent doubled and and then so but it's still possible uh, but certainly a lot fewer people actually like on tax forms like in in census uh, data you find that there's like something like half as many people now as 20 years ago who who claimed to be professional musicians you know and it's not that there's fewer musicians it's just that there's way fewer of them actually surviving at it and i think um what i'm really sad about is um that uh people most people that listen to music are they um just listen to a punk or just listen to folk or just listen to electronics and they they um they, they listen always to the same kinds of stuff and uh, not influenced by another styles and and, and the, um, the the that ones could not do with that ones and so on and i think um, um the um music uh, for me it's really to express myself to um, my political opinions uh, my uh, also um, to deal with my uh, mental health and uh, I I would wish if, if, if a lot of people um, they dare to write songs because um, people say oh I couldn't do this uh, and I say I just have some some chords and, um, and some lyrics and and try it 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 it, uh, it it must not be perfect and a lot of people always think it, it always have to be perfect and so mm -hmm. um, uh, I think uh, making music. Uh, um, everyone could do it in his own way. And okay, if, if you're doing a professional, it's another way. But um, if we make music, it, it's the, the people come together. And, yeah. and not just the music that uh, uh, the, the, big, uh, the big bands like the Rolling Stones um, tour uh, over 40 years and do the same stuff and so on. And there, there's nothing new. And there are so little bands you're also in Germany that don't have the money. They, 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 but uh, they, they, they make really great creative music. So yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah. so that's that's a little bit sad. I think. But it is, yeah, it's true that I mean, I think also when you look at the history of of music and the music industry, 
it seems that basically every time uh, things get really, really uh, stiflingly boring and and predictable and formulaic in the music industry, uh, and and oftentimes really uh, high tech, uh, you know, very high technical uh, quality, but but no real spirit, mm. and then uh, inevitably uh, things come out of the grassroots to challenge that and to blow it all apart, and I think that you you'll that that happened with 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 rock music with uh, the folk revival and with punk and with rap i mean in hip hop it, it's the same phenomenon with many different styles of music that became sometimes very popular or at least you know had a big influence but it was this uh, I, all of them all of these new styles uh, that of course became more or less establishment to some extent but basically these new styles they all have in common this idea that everybody can do it that it's just like three chords and the truth you know that yeah. you know you just you just need a something to to, to you know be, beat a drum and 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 then make up poetry and, and you got it you know you, you just need a guitar and that's it you know it's very low uh, you know low qualifications and uh, and then of course uh, these these styles of music sometimes become very also they change and and they get more technical and and more uh, you know professional quality in a, in different ways, but the idea of everybody being able to do it and and everybody participating and music being a community thing and not being a mystery um, because anybody can do it and then also anybody can get really good at it. I mean, and there are differences between uh really good musicians and 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 not so good musicians who maybe just got started or never really took it that seriously i mean everybody should play anyway because it's good for them and it's good for their community but it's also like i would say there is it, you can be somewhat objective in terms of like if you're a good songwriter if you write a good funny song people will laugh when you sing it mm -hmm. <laughs> if they don't laugh it's not funny <laughs> you know <laughs> so there there are some, there is some objective you know if you write a a story a song about a a story that's really sad and and the the main character dies in the end you know there should be people crying and even in germany you know they might not be crying loudly but you, you should hear some sniffling you know <laughs> some somebody should be getting out their handkerchief you know and uh, <laughs> and then you know you wrote a good sad song and and i say in in germany because i actually as a touring artist i had to learn uh you know how to change your expectations depending on what culture you're in because like in northern europe people do not react loudly to things the way they do in in many other countries like in the us or in southern europe like people don't shout as much in the audience you know but you learned what enthusiasm it, it, you know means you know mm -hmm. sustained applause you know that that means they really liked you you know uh, they don't have to shout after the verses they like in fact you know if anybody does that somebody's going to look at them like what's your problem <laughs> you know <laughs> but it's it depends on the subculture too but it's uh, uh, you know not not to generalize too much but there are definitely differences like the first time i i was touring anywhere in northern europe i was like whoa they all hate me you know and then at the end of the show oh they just bought 20 cds i guess they didn't hate me you know but you, you sort of you know you figure it out <laughs> okay david um was nice talking to you and yeah um, um i learned a lot of about uh, politics and about music and um, um it really connects each um both of us because uh, that are our favorite themes and i hope uh, we stay in touch and uh, talk some um oh my english is my again <laughs> again <laughs> <laughs> you're only self-conscious about it because you're talking with me and then we're <laughs> broadcasting <laughs> it doesn't matter i'm 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 uh, working for a community radio and uh, <laughs> i don't have to be a professional <laughs> that's right but the way you introduced when you said uh, that uh, people can either understand english or it's their tough luck it reminded me of uh, one time i was driving across <laughs> south dakota and at, the, at that time before satellite radio and the internet there was only one radio station in this huge area called the badlands you could only get in one radio station and it was in the lakota language 
and um and so and and in, in this uh, radio program i was listening to for hours this was this old lakota man and it, and he, everything he said was in lakota except that every 20 minutes he'd start speaking english and he'd say what's the matter you don't understand your own language if you don't understand your own language then you should learn it and then he'd switch back to lakota it was just yeah. very yeah. funny yeah Okay, David. Yeah. Uh, have a nice time, and um, I hope your baby will sleep soon. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> then uh, we stay in touch. And yeah, good. Forward. Thank okay. you. Take care, Frank. And um, um, how do you send me the um, um let's see the, the, the material? I'll send it to you. I'll just end the broadcast. End broadcast. <laughs>